Okay, welcome to the morning sessions. So our first speaker is Jerome Dubai, who will tell us about and give us an introduction to generalized hydrodynamics in the lieb Leninger gas. So. Uh, yeah, so thanks a lot to the organizers, especially Filippo for having me here. Uh, I'm very happy to be in Florence. Uh, and uh, Filippo asked for uh, an introductory talk, so uh, I will give my standard introduction to to uh, GHD. I think I think I'm the first speaker to talk about GHD, but there will be many others this week probably. Uh, a lot of experts are in the audience, uh, so this is really not a talk for experts. Uh, so I apologize uh, to them. There is nothing new, uh, but it's, uh, it, I hope it will be useful uh, for, uh, for people who don't know uh, what this is about uh, already. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's start. So, so uh, okay, so, so we are going to talk about integrability, but it's not going to be about uh, it's not so much, it's not going to be about solvability. It's more here, integrability is not viewed as a tool to solve uh, a particular uh, model. It's more viewed as uh, something that strongly affects uh, the dynamics of a, of a system. So uh, take, for instance, uh, a, a model of a gas, for instance, uh, two dimensional hard spheres. And uh, imagine that initially the spheres are at rest and you suddenly kick uh, one of them. Then, of course, uh, what we all know from basic uh, statmec uh, courses is that very quickly uh, all of the balls are going to be set in, in motion. The energy and momentum is going to be spread among all the degrees of freedom. Uh, so that after some time, we can describe the macro state in the box by a a uh, small number of uh, quantities that parameterize a certain equilibrium state. We are going to com come back to that later. And uh, if we do the same uh, for balls in one dimension, uh, a system which is also known as the hard, hard rod gas, then uh, if we kick one of the balls, what you see is that at any time there is one and one ball only that is uh, moving. And of course, uh, this is something that everyone knows very well because even my four-year-old uh, daughter would know about this because uh, this is exactly what you, uh, the phenomenon that you can see in the Newton's cradle. Uh, now, uh, what this tells us is that um, contrary to the standard case where uh, you can parameterize the macro states uh, of, a, of a fluid uh, by a small number of quant quantities, such as particle density, uh, momentum density, and energy density. Uh, here, in that case, uh, you need to keep track of uh, an infinite number or uh, an extensive number of conserved quantities, or uh, in that case, uh, more specifically, just the, the full distribution of velocities of uh, particles in the gas because since uh, energy and momentum is conserved and the collisions are uh, uh, occurring in one dimension, the only thing that can happen during a collision is that the particles exchange their velocities and consequently the full distribution of velocities is conserved uh, over time. Now, uh, this essentially fixes the thermodynamics of the system. And now when we want to look at uh, inhomogeneous systems on very large scales, we want to go from thermodynamics to hydrodynamics. Uh, what we can do is that we uh, chop the, the, our very large system into mesoscopic fluid cells. Uh, each fluid cell is large enough so that it contains uh, a, a very large number of uh, particles, but it's small enough so that it's uh, the, the, so that the fluid is homogeneous uh, through the cell. And then we parameterize the state of the system in terms of this, uh, in terms of uh, a reduced number of uh, quantities, which are correspond to the densities of conserved charges in the in the in the in the system that we started with. And uh, then we, their evolution is fixed by uh, imposing, uh, by, by writing continuity equations for those and by 
uh, figuring out uh, how to express the current the currents as functions of the charge densities. Now, this is the standard uh, hydrodynamic framework. This is how you go from uh, a, a concrete microscopic model to some large scale uh, hydrodynamic uh, description in the, in the, in the non-integrable case. And uh, in the past uh, six or seven years, uh, people, have been asking how to do this uh, for integrable systems and uh, this is what generalized hydrodynamics is about and the generalized uh, in the name refers to the same thing as uh, in uh, generalized Gibbs ensemble it means uh, you take some idea that you get from uh, generic statistical physics uh, and you generalize it to the case with infinitely, uh, infinitely many conserved uh, charges Okay, so uh, in this talk, again, I, as I said, this is really uh, an introduction, uh, and I'm going to briefly describe uh, what has been done in the past uh, uh, five or six years by uh, uh, people I've been wor working with. Um, uh, so I'm going to just give an introduction to this uh, theory, GHD, uh, for the Lieblinger gas because it's my favorite system because it's uh, it's very simple compared to say XXZ, uh, but it's also uh, relevant for experiments and there are there have been experiments actually on that system. So I'm going to briefly talk about that, and then if I have enough time, I will uh, quickly talk about. Uh, what we have been doing more recently, um, and we'll see how far we can get. Uh, yes. Okay, okay. And I have 45 minutes, right? Or yes, so you okay. Uh, all right. So, okay, so we, we start, it's about integrability, so everything in the end boils down to uh, two-body scattering. So let's start with the two-body problem. So imagine we have, uh, let's say, the Lieblinger uh, Hamiltonian on an infinite line. Uh, of course, uh, I get, okay, this is supposed to be a slide for people who don't know integrability in this audience. Probably uh, this is superfluous, but okay. So the eigenstates, as you know, take this form. It's basically a bit on, it's basically a bit away function for two particles, um, and uh, this is in the infinite repulsion limit. For finite g, finite repulsion g, uh, you pick up a phase here, which is the two-body scattering phase, uh, which is a function of the relative momentum of the two particles. And physic one way uh, to uh, understand the, this uh, two scattering phase physically is to imagine a, a, so a thought experiment where you would take two wave packets uh, moving at semi-classical velocities v1, v2, and uh, that will uh, uh, undergo a, a scattering uh, event. So they uh, collide, and then they go away from each other. Uh, the velocity, so the energy momentum is conserved, so the velocities are conserved. Um, but after the collision, uh, they have been shifted a little bit compared to where you would have found them if they uh, had not if if they had been traveling uh, without interactions. So it's been the wave packet has been shifted a little bit uh, forward or backwards, depending on whether the interaction is repulsive or attractive. Uh, so for the repulsive uh, Lieblinger model it's uh, shifted uh, backwards a little bit and uh, yeah it's shifted by some amount delta which is the uh, different uh, the uh, differential scattering phase uh, also uh, very that you, everybody everyone known knows as the kernel in the that shows up in the uh, in the beta ansatz or in the thermodynamic beta ansatz for Lieblinger this is a Lorentzian, uh, okay, and uh, uh, yeah, and this uh, actually results in a in a sort of addressing for the velocities of um, 
of particles that uh, move through the system. Because if you imagine that you have one particle moving at velocity v, so in this space-time picture, it's, uh, it's a straight line with slope here, uh, 1 over v. Uh, when it's collide, if, if it propagates, if it, if it were propagating in the vacuum, then it would follow this dashed line here. Uh, but it's not propagating in the vacuum, it's propagating in a background of other particles moving at velocity uh, w. And as a result, every time it hits another particle, it's kicked backwards by an amount delta, which is this differential scattering phase. And so uh, you see that it's effectively tra it's traveling at an, an effective velocity, so which is fixed by the, the by the slope of this uh, of this uh, broken line here. And uh, a simple calculation, elementary calculation, uh, will show you that. Uh, uh, here the picture is, is drawn for a single uh, for a single velocity of particles in the background w. But if you imagine that you have a certain density of uh, background particles with velocity a row of w uh, of particles moving at velocity w, uh, and you integrate over the, the uh, over the density, then you will find very easily that integral equation uh, here. So the velocity of excitations. Uh, in the system is uh, addressed by the interaction with the other particles and uh, and the resulting equation uh, reads like that. Uh, so this equation f was known for the hard-rod gas already in the in the 60s, even maybe even earlier. But uh, in the quantum uh, for for quantum systems, it was it reappeared uh, more recently. Uh, in the context of uh, all the works on quantum quenches and thermalization, uh, generalized Gibbs ensembles, and so on. So I think it first appeared maybe in a paper by Fabian, and then uh, it reappeared in the in uh, in uh, in all the works on on uh, GHD. Okay, so this was the two-body uh, case. Now, uh, since it's integrable, uh, when you go to the many-body case, everything sort of boils down to the two-body case. So the, the, the eigenstates on an infinite line uh, are uh, you know, just a beta wave function, so superposition of products of plane waves, uh, labeled by the, the set of rapidities. Uh, here, the rapidities are written as V. And we have a uh, many-body scattering phase that uh, 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 breaks down into uh, uh, a product of two-body scattering phases. So each eigenstate is labeled by the set of rapidities, and this allows, uh, this allows us to define a certain distribution of rapidities uh, just uh, in, in this way. So we can, you know, it's a distribution of rapidities that enters the thermodynamic B to answer. Um, now, okay, so what, what's one thing that is important uh, for if you talk to experimentalists is that this distribution of rapidities actually it's, it's uh, something that is measurable. So it's not just uh, a mathematical, uh, a mathematical uh, ingredient that shows up in the solution of the system. It, it's really something that can be measured. And the reason why it can be measured is that the rapidities are the asymptotic uh, momenta when you expand uh, your system, when you let your gas expand uh, in, in 1D. So if you take your system, uh, say, in a box, and you let it expand along, uh, along the infinite line, the particles will uh, initially collide. This, I mean, they will undergo complicated evolution, but after, so if you wait sufficiently long, then uh, they will be sufficiently well separated so that they don't interact anymore. And at that time, the individual momenta that you pick are uh, the rap correspond to the rapidities that you had in the initial state. And this is something, this is an experiment that uh, uh, has actually been done uh, recently. I think that was 2019. And uh, what you can see here is the measured uh, distribution of momenta in the gas after a certain expansion time in 1D uh, uh, compared to the theory. So this is the experiment. This is the theory prediction. Um, 
And uh, as you can see, so the, 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 the distribution of momenta uh, uh, changes with expansion time. So if you, this is before they expand, this is after some expansion time of one millisecond, this is after three milliseconds and so on. But uh, if they wait sufficiently long, then the momentum distribution does not evolve anymore. And so it corresponds to what's happening at the bottom here uh, when the particles are uh, well, sufficiently well separated. So this, uh, uh, importantly, this, this uh, distribution of rapidities, which is the key, uh, key ingredient in, in TBA, is, is something that can actually be uh, measured. Okay, so now, uh, okay, so, in two, so now six years ago, so it's quite old now, uh, there is two uh, classic papers uh, uh, came out uh, by a number of people in the audience. So Olaja, Benjamin, and uh, Takato are all here. Um, Jacopo is also here. Uh, this is Maurizio Fagotti, this is Bruno Bertini, and this is Mario Colura. They, they are not here. Maybe they will come some other time, I don't know. Uh, uh, anyway, so they wrote these two very important papers uh, that uh, sort of started the the started a, a new field somehow, or a new subfield of uh, out of equilibrium uh, quantum physics. Uh, and so what, what, what they did is that they, um, they uh, adapted this picture of this hydrodynamic picture of mesoscopic uh, fluid cells that you couple through, uh, through uh, that you uh, that, yeah, that you couple through continuity equations uh, to the to the quantum integrable case. So what what they wrote is a sort of a kinetic equation for the uh, for uh, for the distribution of uh, rapidities that is now made position and uh, time dependent. So you imagine that you chop your very large integrable system into mesoscopic uh, fluid cells, if if each of which uh, is the macro state in each uh, fluid cell is represented by a certain distribution of uh, rapidities. And, uh, and so then you, you make that, uh, uh, you connect the different fluid cells by, by, by this uh, uh, differential equation here. Uh, and uh, okay, so initially the equation was written with uh, no right hand side, so this was just zero, but quickly after the first papers, uh, Benjamin and Takato uh, included the, the case of uh, an external trapping potential, which, is, which just enters here through, uh, uh, through Newton's second law, essentially. And, uh, and so this is the, the full equation, uh, including uh, an external potential. Uh, this is what uh, is useful to, to make connections with uh, experiments. So that's the first equation. It's this uh, kinetic-like equation for the rapidities which, I mean, you, in some sense, you may view as some sort of uh, uh, time and position uh, dependent uh, thermodynamic beta ansatz. And, uh, and the, the key ingredient is the effective velocity here. And as I explained earlier, this effective velocity satisfies a certain integral equation that, in, in, that uh, uh, encodes the, the two-body scattering. Uh, yes. equation to hold given the fact that V breaks into dependency. Uh, yeah, so the question is, uh, okay, we are talking about integrability, but the trap breaks integrability. So does that introduce a time scale? Uh, uh, yeah, the, does that introduce a, a, a time scale uh, beyond which uh, this is not uh, valid anymore? Is the, yeah. Um, so I, I would say the following. So when you write, you know, I mean, I, I don't think this is a question that is specific to integrability. Um, if you write the Euler equation for a standard fluid, you will write a continuity equation for the 
uh, density of particles and for density for uh, conservation of for conservation of, of particles and for conservation of momentum right now you put your standard okay so you write uh, you will write two Euler equations say uh, and now you put your system in a tra in a in an external potential and it breaks conservation of momentum that doesn't mean that you have to throw away the the second Euler equation uh, it's just that it just means that the external potential enters as a source term in that in that equation uh, which is what is happening here so uh, so the fact that a, a certain number of conservation laws are broken by the external trap by the external potential uh, is encoded here because this is like a source term uh, now does this introduce a time so what will happen is that if you actually solve if, if you were able to solve that equation numerically say for very very long times then you, what you would presumably see is that uh, that the system uh, will equilibrate or go to some stationary state where the broken uh, conservation laws uh, uh, disappear somehow. Uh, uh, now, how to relate this to a, time, a certain time scale? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's probably uh, you need elementary excita excitations to, uh, to yeah you need them to have sufficient time to travel several times to the system uh, so that they equilibrate or something something like that but uh, does an, a, G, a ghd expert in the audience have something to say hmm? Wait. You can go one order beyond uh, hydrodynamic uh, expansion and you at the diffusive level so you see uh, terms that break integrability in the sense that uh, induce um, decay of conserved quantities and these are order dx v square so in a sense like higher order in one over x you will see decay of conserved quantities Yeah, but uh, I don't, I don't think this was Fabian's question. But... Yeah, I don't know the the answer to um, Fabian's question, but I think it's very it depends a lot on the phenomenology, right? So what happens with the exact uh, fluid as we evolve it? Uh, so it's. Yeah. But the other thing we need to say is so that, you know, corroborating what you said, the the. Earth Cost of quantities change and the breaking of integrability by the potential is also an effect of the surface of the fluid cell because inside the fluid cell essentially essentially constant and that's why it can be put together in, in the single equation like in usual hydro um, okay so yeah I don't really know but uh... But but uh, let me just say that for me this is not a question about integrability. This you can ask the exact same question about just a, the standard fluid where where you put an external poten potential that breaks uh, conservation of momentum, and uh, yeah, and you know when you write an Euler equation for water, uh, uh, I mean it's it's. Uh, no one asks, uh, you know, wh why do we include a, a, an equation for conservation of momentum while conservation is not uh, conserved? Uh, so so uh, I think it's the same. Anyway, um, okay. So this uh, this is the yeah. Okay. So this was a like a hand waving way of uh, describing uh, the theory of um, uh, Olaja, Ben, uh, Takato, Jacopo, and so on. Um, but uh, now they have, okay, so in the past few years, th this has motivated a lot of works in many directions. And uh, uh, since this is a workshop about integrability, uh, I, should, uh, uh, I should talk about this uh, contribution here, which uh, I believe is, is uh, quite important. So, um, okay, I, I'm more, 
a more uh, educated way of uh, deriving this, these uh, GHD equations uh, would be to uh, be able to really write the, the operators uh, and the, their the, the, to really write the conserved charges, say in second quantization, which of course we know cannot really be done for Lieblinger, but maybe we can do some, maybe we can find some regularization or something. But uh, if we could write these uh, conserved charges, say in second quantization, and write the associated current operators through the continuity equation, uh, then the problem would really be to be able to compute the expectation value of the current operator uh, in, uh, in, in, a specific, in, in a given uh, beta state, right? Uh, so th this is, of course, uh, something that is, uh, seems to be super hard. And before 2016, uh, this looked like, a, at least as far as I know, this looked like a totally hopeless uh, problem. Because, uh, okay, as I just said, writing these charges in second quantization uh, uh, is not really possible. You need to find a regularization. This, is, this makes things uh, messy and hard. Uh, second, even if you had a good regularization, uh, you would still have to if, uh, compute to construct the current operators. This would also be very hard. And third, once you have the, uh, the current operators, computing their expectation, but I mean, this would not be uh, necessarily related to nice conserved charges. And so, uh, so computing the expectation values of those in beta states would uh, probably be a huge mess. And uh, and uh, there's, I mean, it looks like super hard. Um, but the so, so, so in these two uh, groundbreaking papers, they just came up with a very simple, uh, very simple answer in the thermodynamic limit, uh, which uh, looks like a fairly simple uh, generalization of the formula that you have for the for the for the charges themselves. So, of course, the expectation values of the charges those are are trivial by definition, and when you take the thermodynamic limit, you just get that the, the their expectation value is given by some integral over the root density multiplied by by the function f of v that that uh, parameterizes your conserved uh, charges. Uh, and for the current, it's essentially the same expression where you just multiply by the effective velocity. And that's a remarkably simple uh, and, and profound uh, formula that uh, these people uh, just uh, guessed. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and since, since, the, since the, the early works of 2016, that many people have uh, uh, worked hard to, to uh, to, to, to actually derive them and, and increase the level, the level of, of rigor that you, that you have to derive uh, these, uh, these, uh, this formula. And um, uh, so as far as I know, uh, perhaps the, let's say the, the, the most uh, satisfying uh, result in that direction is, uh, is the analog of this formula in uh, finite size. Uh, that was done by uh, Bolash uh, Pushkai and, and, and uh, people around him. Uh, and they really derived uh, a formula that is valid uh, in, in, in finite size. So you, like, you take Lieblinger for five particles and you have an exact uh, formula for the expectation value of the current uh, in, in uh, arbitrary uh, beta states. And it's a super nice, super cute, uh, uh, simple formula that uh, simply involves the inverse of the Godin matrix. Uh, and, and from there, uh, taking the thermodynamic limit, you find this. And then this gives you GHD because uh, the, the expectation value of the current as a function of the, of the charge densities is the basic ingredient that you need to write uh, Euler scale uh, hydrodynamics. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if it's possible to express those uh, current operator in terms of uh, local um, densities, because I mean the the, the Qs that that you express as the density charge, uh, yeah, the char the density of the charge, kind of it, they, they are they can be written in terms of local operators, right? 
So is it possible to, to also to get this uh, density of the current? Is it possible? No, so in Lieblinger, you cannot even write the Qs beyond the beyond the third or fourth charge uh, you you you, ha you run into regularization issues that, that's very well known for uh, some something by Korepin and Davis it's old so you cannot even write the, ch the charge densities for spin chains you can yes uh, yes yes and I suppose you could write the currents yes as well if you work sufficiently hard but in the end this is not what they do actually uh, they found they find a a way to circumvent the whole. So, yeah, I mean, they, they don't they don't implement uh, this program here. They they find a, a way around it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there have been so no. Okay. So this is basically the theory. Now there have been uh, experiments on this, uh, which is uh, particularly nice. It's nice that we can connect. Uh, you know. Uh, a very nice uh, theory based on integrability to uh, things that are happening in the lab. Uh, okay, so why why are experimentalists interested in in this? So it's uh, it's very simple. It's just because, as usual, you know, experimentalists are able to uh, produce one-dimensional gases that are described uh, by with atoms that have uh, very short-range uh, interactions because the interaction is very short range and the gas is uh, quite dilute. Uh, it's a very good approximation to say that the interaction is a, is a contact interaction, so just a delta function. And so it's well described by the, by the Lieb-Linegar model. And, and it's very well accepted that uh, the Lieb-Linegar model is the right description of, uh, of uh, many experiments that uh, exist in the world. Uh, and typically, experimentalists uh, deal with gases made of, uh, depending on the setup, it can go from 10 to 10,000 uh, uh, atoms. And, uh, okay, so 10 atoms, you could imagine uh, doing a, an exact simulation on a, on, a, on, a, on a computer, on a classical computer, but, uh, but for more than 10, it, it becomes uh, very hard very quickly, uh, obviously, uh, because as usual, you run into the exponential wall uh, of uh, many body quantum physics. Um, and for instance, uh, one very influential in experiment that was there uh, was the, the 2006 uh, quantum Newton's cradle that really motivated a lot of uh, works on out of out of equilibrium quantum systems in in uh, in 1d so what they what experimentalists did back then was to prepare a cloud an atom cloud in a so a one dimensional cloud so a cloud uh, confined in a very thin tube they put a cloud uh, that is uh, confined by a uh, by a shallow uh, lo uh, longitudinal confinement, harmonic confinement, they managed to split the atom cloud into two parts with some uh, by, by applying a Bragg pulse. So half the atoms go to the right, half the atoms go to the left, and then because of the longitudinal confinement, they start coming back to each other, and then they collide, and they undergo uh, like hundreds or thousands of collisions like this. Now, if this was a, a standard fluid, then you would it would be like having two droplets that you throw against each other. You would expect them to coalesce and ultimately reach uh, equilibrium. And this is not what happens here. Instead, they, the packets uh, just it seems that they just go through each other without seeing each other. Uh, but of course, they do see each other. They interact very strongly, uh, but still they undergo thousands of collisions. So. People made the connection with the Newton's the classical Newton's cradle and uh, and uh, traced that uh, phenomenon back to integrability. But there was no possibility of doing numerics or anything uh, based on that because, as 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 usual, uh, uh, the Hilbert space is uh, just huge, you, and uh, and so you cannot do anything. Uh, but now with GHD, with this. Uh, new development uh, developments for not so new anymore but developments from 2016 you can do that on a laptop uh, uh, very quickly and so this is why uh, experimentalists are are uh, 
I mean, this is why this is actually useful uh, for experimentalists, in my So experimentalists, uh, you would be surprised how, how, how much integrability they actually know. Uh, they know how to do thermodynamic beta ansatz and so on, because this is actually useful uh, to describe uh, their experiments. Uh, anyway, uh, so in experiments, there are two, uh, there are essentially two setups. And uh, depending on who you talk to, they work either with the first setup or with the, the other. And uh, this, uh, they, can, they cannot access exactly the same regimes of the gas. So one setup is uh, mag magnetic trapping based on uh, atom chips. So this is like uh, the electronic chips that you have in your uh, electronic devices. They use them to, uh, en to engineer three-dimensional magnetic uh, traps in which they can trap the atoms. Um, so this usually allows you to work with a single cloud uh, in, uh, in the weakly interacting regime. Uh, and usually high, quite high temperature. And then a different setup is uh, this thing that you've probably, uh, that you probably, uh, uh, that every, uh, that you've probably seen before. So that you just, uh, by playing with counter propagating uh, laser, you can engineer arrays of, uh, arrays of one dimensional tubes, each two th that are sufficiently far away so that they, they are decoupled. So you have one, Ga one, di one one dimensional gas in each tube um, and here you can really reach extremely low temperature uh, and uh, and uh, strong repulsion the only problem with that setup is that whatever you measure is uh, average automatically over all the tubes so it's more difficult to access uh, uh, observables in a single tube uh, okay so these are old, these are typical uh, uh, experimental results, uh, fairly old now, but this is just to show you that, uh, uh, yeah, the integrability and so the thermodynamic beta ansatz uh, was, was used, has been used for a long time uh, by experimentalists. So this is a famous experiment uh, in Amsterdam, but in the group of Van Ruten. Um, where they just used thermodynamic beta ansatz with the local density approximation to uh, to compute the the density profile of atoms of the Leblinger gas at equilibrium in our harmonic trap, and uh, compared with experiments and found that it was working very well. This is a similar experiment, but in the strongly interacting regime, and as you can see, it works. Uh, it works super well. So the, the the full line, the full blue line here is TBA used in a local density approximation, and the wiggly line is the experiment. So this is what typically what people were doing before uh, GHD, and now with GHD they can do the same, but uh, time dependent. Uh, so for instance, this was an, an experiment done by in, by Isabel Bouchul and her PhD student uh, Max Schemer. And uh, Benjamin and, and myself were uh, were doing the theory, and uh, yeah. So he, what they do is that they prepare the gas in a double well potential, then they release the double well potential, and they let the gas expand. Uh, in GHD, what you simulate is the evolution of the distribution of rapidities in phase space, which looks looks some, like like this. And then when you integrate over rapidities at a fixed position, you get the atom density, and that's what you compare to the experimental data. And it's, it was working very well. Every, yeah, yeah. What is the correlation? In, in this particular experiment, what is the correlation length um, in, in the initial state? Yeah, it's uh, very, very short. It's actually, so because the temperature is, so uh, temperature is quite high, so it's super short and it's smaller than the pixel size. So, yeah. Um, okay, this was the same experiment, just slightly different uh, quench. So instead of going to a flat trap, they go to a harmonic trap and then they see uh, oscillations. Now, there, there was a, another experiment uh, um, 
two years later, this is, uh, yeah, so the previous experiment was a cheap experiment, so uh, that we've done with a single tube with magnetic trapping. This, this is a, another experiment with optical trapping, so they have a, an array of tubes. Uh, so it's a different regime, so this is really strongly interacting, strongly interacting, uh, close to the tungs girardot limit. And, um, and uh, also they do a very strong quench here, so what they do is that they prepare the gas uh, uh, in, a, in the ground state of a harmonic, poten uh, harmonic potential and then they quench the frequency of the, of the harmonic potential, so they really compress the, the cloud uh, very strongly and, they and then they follow the oscillations, uh, so this time not of the in-situ uh, density profile but really of the distribution of rapidities, because uh, as I explained earlier, um, they can actually uh, let the gas expand in 1D and measure the momentum distribution after a sufficiently long expansion time and have access to the, uh, to the uh, rapidity distribution integrated over the whole uh, system. Um, so, okay, so they do that and when you compare to theory, it works very nicely and so on. So, so, uh, so yeah, the experimentalists were uh, really happy about this and uh, and as theorists of course we are also happy that uh, uh, that the theory turns out to be useful uh, and uh, yeah so that's uh, that's it that's what I wanted to say about this uh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe just a comment so uh, um, okay there's one thing that uh, the that was observed experimentally that uh, uh, for me, is a is a still a mystery. Um, so, I mean, perhaps someone will have some idea in this workshop. I, I don't know. Um, but um, so they they were able to do the experiment with a very very small number of atoms in each tube. So as low as uh, a, a dozen of atoms in a tube. And so you would not expect a hydrodynamic theory to describe a system of. 10 atoms. Like if I give you 10 water molecules, 10 water molecules, you would not expect to be able to describe their behavior by a Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, but still, this is, I mean, this is essentially what's happening here. So you do 10 particles, and you compare to the hydrodynamic uh, um, to the hydrodynamic simulation, and and it seems to work. So, So gamma uh, initial in the initial state is okay. So in the initial state, gamma is of order ten, and then uh, when you compress, since you increase the density a lot, and the uh, gamma is proportional to inverse density, gamma goes down to something like 0.5. Uh, so it's it, yes, yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If it were, yeah, that's the, uh, exactly yes. If it were as free particles, then it would not be surprising because uh, this hydrodynamic, so-called hydrodynamic equation that we write is not really hydrodynamics in that case. It's just evolu It's a really a kinetic equation, and then it's not surprising that this works. Um, but yeah, uh, gamma is changing quite a lot here. So. I don't know, maybe there's something to do there. Uh, maybe maybe GHD is not hydrodynamics in the end, I don't know. Uh, but that connects to actually what you've been doing recently. Uh, so yeah, maybe, maybe we can formulate GHD as an evolution equation for some Wigner function uh, after all. But I don't know. Uh, anyway. And uh, I guess my time is up. Uh, we're... Okay, so um, just, okay, what we have been doing uh, more recently uh, with uh, Benjamin and also with uh, others, uh, Pasquale, Calabrese, uh, Paola Ruggiero, and uh, Alvise Bastianello, uh, Jean-Marie, who, uh, who is also here, um, uh, is uh, try to, try to reincorporate uh, quantum fluctuations in this uh, system. So um, basically, uh, 
you see what what we are what we do when when we talk about GHD is that we trade a full a quantum many body system uh, for a, a classical evolution equation uh, just in the same way that you would uh, let's say, yeah in the same way that uh, you trade the motion of uh, 10 to the 23 water molecules for our navier stokes equation here it's the same except that the original quantum uh, the original uh, microscopic system is uh, is really quantum um and uh, so then you can ask uh, you know wh where does this wh where does the quantumness of the of the of the microscopic uh, system enter in in the final description and and what are we losing when we do that and uh, okay so the quantumness uh, that's uh, easy it's it's clear uh, from the way this, the theory is constructed, uh, it enters through the, the Wigner time delay, so the, the, the scattering shift uh, uh, that you have uh, for uh, under two-body collisions. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this is really a quantum effect. Uh, you can cook up You can cook up classical models that, uh, that mimic this uh, this uh, Wigner time delay. This is something that has been done by Benjamin and uh, Jean-Sébastien Co and Takato and and other and, and that other people have done as well later. But uh, anyway, so this is really where the quantum you see the the, 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 the a quantum effect uh, in the final uh, in the final equation. But uh, then you can ask uh, uh, the, the, whether or not you 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 you, lo you lost some some effects. And and one thing uh, that uh, I like to, uh, to to emphasize is that yes, uh, one thing that we lose is the is the po uh, possible correlations or entanglement between the different fluid cells uh, at equal time, because uh, when you do this picture of mesoscopic fluid cells, the, each of which is locally uh, relaxed to a stationary state. You are uh, assuming, or intrinsically uh, uh, assuming that uh, that they are all uh, that they are all independent. And in a true quantum fluid, this will not be the case because they will be entangled, and there will be long-range correlations and so on. So in the uh, okay, so the picture is you you know we've traded a real animal, complicated animal, for a spherical cow, and we are asking whether uh, w what exactly we lost when we do that, and when we want to reintroduce some of the features um, to perhaps get a better description of the original thing. So go from the spherical cow to, uh, to some, some sort of improved uh, cow. And, and uh, okay, so this is basically what we are been trying to do. Uh, uh, okay, I don't, maybe I, I will just skip this. Um, so the kind of things that we can do uh, in this way. So basically, what we are trying to do is a is a is a generalized Luttinger liquid theory that uh, that is uh, added on top of GHD somehow. And what we can do with that is that we can uh, compute. Uh, correlation function, equal time correlation functions, such as, for instance, a density-density correlation here um, uh, that evolves uh, uh, in time. So here, the setup is a Lieblinger gas initially in a double well potential, then we quench to a harmonic potential. Uh, so you have initially two packets of particles that start uh, moving like this. And we follow density-density uh, correlations as a function of time, and uh, we get some uh, some evolution equation that we solve numerically, and that uh, gives us access to some of these things. And then we compare to a DMRG simulations for small number of particles, and we find uh, acceptable agreement. Um, okay, and let me just stress that if, as long as we look at one point function, so the, den the den atom density uh, as a function of time, then we are in the standard uh, GHD framework. This is what GHD gives us access to, but correlation functions, this is beyond, and, uh, and this is what uh, we are trying to do. Okay, and the, there have been uh, a few develop a few developments, uh, the, especially by uh, Stefano Scopa, who is a postdoc uh, in uh, Pasquale Calabrese's group. Uh, in particular, here, what you see is a is a setup where um, you release a gas from a 
so you, you take uh, this is now a spin chain so it's uh, it's non interacting fermions uh, prepared so it prepared in a state where half the system is filled on the left half the system is empty on the right and then you let it evolve and you follow the uh, not only the evolution of the density profile which uh, is easy but really the full uh, the full and the, the, the full entanglement entropy as a function of position and time, and that's uh, harder. But with this setup, you can do it. And, and when you compare to numerics, it, it works uh, very well. So that's the game that we have been playing uh, lately. And uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, I was I'm over time as I expected. So uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for a nice talk. Are there questions, comments? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, if GG is a Hadwe equation uh, mm -hmm. and you know the why it works so well. I mean, uh, in GGD, there is a reduction of degrees of freedom, like in any Hadwe theory, but not that much, right? Because you still have infinitely many degrees of freedom. So in this sense, you could expect that thermalization or kind of, you know, occurs much quicker. You just have to go over all these uh, hyper, hyper tori and they're you know, relatively small because there's a lot of them. So in this sense, yeah, you could expect it. But, but still, there's a reduction of degrees of freedom. So in that sense, it's a hydro theory. And in the end, my point of view is any many body system, you go at large scale, there will be some reduction of degrees of freedom, maybe a lot, maybe not so much. And this is what hydrodynamics is supposed to describe. Even the Liouville equation for free particles, it's a hydrodynamic equation. I mean, you can see it that way. You don't have to, but you can see it that way. So from that point of view, I would say, yes, it's hydro, but of course, not the conventional understanding of hydro, right? Um, yeah, it's just a little conceptual comment. The other thing is... Uh, no, but I think... Yeah. Uh, okay, so, but... Uh, but uh, so I agree with Fabian, so if... if so if if you think of uh, say the the hardcore limit uh, where ghd is nothing but the evolution of uh, the wigner function for the underlying fermion free fermions uh, then it's clear why why it works i mean then you could do it for two particles and it would still work right and it's it's clear why it's just because it has nothing to do with a with a coarse grain description it's uh, just a uh, yeah yeah i mean not just a coarse grain description but uh, in any case, you know, you still don't describe everything. So the point is that you describe a small part of the whole dynamics, and that is sufficient then to you know evaluate whatever conserved density is and all that. And this is what how do and yeah, you can use Wigner function in free models, or you can use Liouville equation in, in classical, uh, you know, classical free particles model, but you do lose a bit of information when you do that. And uh, and it yet it, it is a consequence of the underlying macroscopic dynamics, which, which is what hydrodynamics is, I don't know. So it does, I agree that you don't necessarily need the whole cross graining and all that, yes, fine, but still it's reduction no, but, of degrees of freedom. Uh, I, I agree that you lose some things, like, uh, for, yeah. I don't know, for instance. Phases or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, okay, or, I mean, if you, okay, if you go to the hardcore limit, you know, you will have these wiggle, these uh, ripples or yeah. these yeah. uh, the use, free yeah. del oscillations that yes. you, you always, that are always there. And they will not be there in the uh, GHD solution, Euler yeah. scale GHD solution, of course. Because you have registered I mean, Yeah, but still, I mean, yeah. this at least, uh, this tells you why it's used. I mean, if, even if you go to super long times, and a uh, very small number of particles you still it will still agree on uh, yeah i agree agree i mean sure you have an expansion for why uh, but it's, it's still the same concept as as uh, any hydrodynamic theory in, in I, general I, I, that I you, I, you I, average I, out whatever small scale oscillations and you get reduction degrees of freedom but uh, yeah so anyway so the, the other little thing you were talking about the, the effective and how this was also uh, appeared in previous literature. It also appeared in soliton gases in 2000s, right? So people have constructed, you know, KDV solutions with many, many solitons mm -hmm. and just just derive exactly the GHD equations actually much before us, right? In, in the in the classical realm with this effective velocity and with that explanation of the effective velocity and all this. So this is in the 2000s. So there was a so, kind of, I yeah. So you mean there, there there is something between the hard 
the hard rod gas and yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. and juicy. Yeah, okay, yeah. fine.